the Palmetto Health Injury Report coach, and that first one is probably the most uh, noticeable one and most You're significant right. one right now. You're right. Antoine looks like he may be out for the season. I was telling one of my friends last night that, that our tight end had had an ankle injury, and he said, well, y'all don't throw the ball to the tight end anyway. But I said, well, we're using the block at least. Mm -hmm. But that's a, he's a big guy for us in our scheme, and you got to set the edge for that guy. And you see Roy now in yard. Javon Nathan. I think all those guys will be okay, but the big one is our tight end. Of course, Antoine Gar has caught several passes, by he the has. way, this year. And, and we do throw the ball to our uh, tight end occasionally. Yeah. Very much so. Mm -hmm. We'll take a time out here on the Buddy Pugh Show's halftime. South Carolina stayed up 20 to 3 over the North Carolina Anti Aggies. We'll be back with Saturday's exciting second half after these messages. Clothing for Buddy Pugh provided by Bill Owens Clothing. Bill Owens Clothing is a proud sponsor of the Buddy Pugh Show. Bulldogs won the toss, elected to defer to the second half coach, and of course, uh, this is what we typically like to do, but how about this? Talk about atypical. Donovan Richards on the return. It's, it's not very often you see a linebacker back there returning kickoffs, but down. <laughs> Donovan has done a little bit of everything over his playing days, and we needed a guy, so he wanted to do it, and we tried to do it, so, you know, we come back and hand off to Ashton Jordan here, and we kind of get the ball down the field deep and out in, in their territory, but eventually we have a little bit of a mess up, uh, and and, uh, and 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 get thrown for a loss here on a on a blitz package. And, you know we do get the ball here to elbow on a little crossing route, and he goes around to I guess maybe about third and in inches. But from that point, we seem to you know have a little bit of another little dink in our schedule here, where Malcolm can't quite get the ball to his running back, and we get a. We get a lost yardage play here. Big time loss. We'll call on Blake Erickson to punt the football, but Blake, an all conference kicker coach, and you know, you can put him down for the punt as well, as you can't do it any better than that. This was a nice job as Joe Thomas picking the ball up on about the five yard line, and they do eventually get it out. They'll throw a nice little play action pass over the middle here for a first down, and you know, I'm kind of feeling like, well, I don't know if we're in such good shape here or not, but. You know, we do get eventually get uh, get them stopped again. This is that little young running back, Larry Raper. That, that good running back was hurt. I think we kind of hurt him at the beginning of the game. And then we get the ball back here. And you see Aston Jordan run the ball here again on the little cutback play out of the, off of the zone play. 126 yards for Ashton on Saturday on 24 carries. Devin Wurry also coached right at 100 yards. He had 91 yards on just 10 carries. Now, you can always bet that when Devin gets it, it's going to be a downhill run. And, you know, that's a good change up from when you got a you know a speed back and you got another guy that you can really kind of pound them with so speaking this is, of speed yeah there's Elmo Elmo this is a little speed sweep and this is kind of a little play that's that we stole from Wofford this is the speed sweep of sorts and you know they say that uh uh uh, uh imitation is a sincere form of flattery and I guess then coach Mike Ayers ought to be happy then Malcolm scores here from uh, about the two yard line in. That was Malcolm's third touchdown of the <laughs> afternoon. 11 play, 79 yard drive coach, and it took five minutes. That's pretty much how you want to do it. That's exactly how you want to do it. That gives us a chance to get up 27 to 3. And, you know, from this point, you know, you're starting to feel a little bit better. And, you know, we kick off to them, and, and uh, you know, we get a, 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 a good break here on a, on, on a turnover on the kickoff return team. Big hit there by Titus Graham out of Lake City. Torian Warren would have to leave the ball game. He would come back. Bulldogs take over on the fumble. And Ashton Jordan, some good yardage, about seven yards carried and for the South. You can see we pounded them there a little bit. We pushed the pile. And, you know, we come back and throw the little speed sweep play again to uh, uh, to Linnell Elmore. And Elmore gets the first down, down to about the 10 yard line. It's first and goal now for South Carolina State. The Bulldogs offensive line. I hadn't talked much about the offensive line coach, but they're very steady uh, this yeah, past weekend. Yeah, they were. You know, we tried to bite off a little bit too much here on a little corner route. And, you know, we ended up throwing the intercept. That was one of the more disappointing players of the game. North Carolina A&T brings it out now. They'll have it first and 10 from their 34-yard line. We go into the fourth quarter now. Bulldogs leading 27-3, and really the defense sort of takes over from there. Yeah, we're starting, to, we're starting to get a little something going here, but now this is a play here where Larry Raper, one of their you know, young running backs, makes a nice gain against us. South Carolina State again. Donovan Richards on that particular tackle. Big play here for South Carolina State, Pat, Pat Washington. Washington. Pat Washington gets a nice sack. Pat has some plays this game, and he didn't show up so much on 
a big stats total, but you know, he was always around the ball there. Another separation there, David Irby on the hit, Dominic Ellis in the backfield with Mason Harris. Yeah, all those guys kind of conversed on them, and uh, you know, we get the ball back here, and we're going to pound them a little bit here with Devin Ware, and you know, from this point on, I think, you know, we kind of handle them pretty good as far as running the ball is concerned. And it looks like the exact same play, and again, Coach Wary at, uh, you know, 230 pounds is very tough to bring down. He is. Uh, this is when Devin really can make a bunch of his yards because what happens is as the game goes on, they get softened up a little bit, and a big back can make some yards there. And there's a real big back there. <laughs> this is uh, this is Malcolm. <laughs> Looks like he's gonna throw it, and it ends up handing, and then we come back and give it to him again. And this is a fourth down play here. We go, we go for it on fourth and inches, and they offside, you know, to give us a uh, uh, you know an easy play there without having to measure. And then. Uh, Chris Merrill, uh, one of our uh, uh, younger running backs, is starting to get some yards there, and then we give it back to Chris again, and Chris goes in for the score. Chris Merrill gets a two-yard touchdown run. This was a 13-play, 78-yard drive that took seven minutes off the clock. Bulldogs get the point after touchdown, go up 34-3. Right, and then we start to, to really get after them here. Uh, uh, David Urban and uh, Donovan Richards, all that crowd there. Uh, I see uh, Malcolm Reeves involved in that play. Then David comes back here. They try to throw the naked again toward David. That was one of the things that he really, you know, could play better than a defensive end style kind of guy. And then, you know, we get a tip ball here, and Darius Drummond makes his second interception today. This is a good, a good homecoming for a freshman from North Carolina, huh? Give South Carolina <laughs> State some great field position, coach. And of course, uh, you talk about Chris Merrill coming back in again. And Chris filled in well at Delaware State, and when given the opportunity here, second touchdown. And this is Derek Wilder in the game at quarterback, getting a few snaps. So, you know, we get the chance to play most of our young kids. Point after touchdown makes it 41-3 now, South Carolina State. And again, talk about big plays from the defense. <laughs> and this is Samaj Moody uh, making the hit here. And then uh, Marshall McFadden punches it out. I think Marshall knows the whole time the ball is down and, and tries to pick it up. But he's not a good enough athlete to pick it up, but Donovan Richards is. <laughs> Donovan tried to get it in the end zone. I thought he'd gotten in, but he doesn't get in. Devin where he gets in and gets the final nail in the coffin. 48-3 South Carolina State a winner. And again, coach total domination for the Bulldogs on the stat sheets it was uh, we rushed the football for you know for a, a good amount of yards almost 300 yards and threw it fairly decent about 100 yards there but we didn't have to throw it a bunch in the second half the State Farm insurance drive of the game we go back into the uh, second quarter I guess it was South Carolina State really starting to get some separation coach on this drive this was the uh, 12 play 61 yard drive our first really consistent drive we had in the afternoon it was and uh, we had the ball a couple times to uh, uh, to our running backs inside, and then finally we give it to Devin where Devin gets it down close to that goal line. Oh, that is the State Farm Insurance drive of the game. We'll take a timeout here on the Buddy Pew Show. When we come back, we'll tell you what is up next for your South Carolina State Bulldogs on this edition of the Buddy Pew Show. For the next big Bulldog game, stock up on the most delicious tailgating packages around at Fats Cafe, where regulars get treated special and everyone's a regular. I'm going to look at the Fats Cafe, Fats Facts around the Mideast Athletic Conference this past weekend. Coach, no game any bigger than the Florida A&M Bethune-Cookman upset as Florida A&M gets a share of the championship. Hampton won on Saturday. Delaware State got a win over Howard. North Carolina Central a loss. As we look at the standings, Coach, and the way we figured it out, a three-way tie for first place, South Carolina State, Bethune-Cookman, and Florida A&M. It was, and, you know, it gives us a chance to say that we won three conference championships in a row. So, you know, the one one guy that's really happy is the ring salesman because you get a bunch of them in our league this year. <laughs> you start talking about uh, accolades coach David Irby, defensive player of the year. What a year for David Irby. Well, I think he was uh, well deserving of that award and David's been a solid citizen as well as you know a big playmaker for us for the entire time that he's been here. We talk about Irby. Josh Harrison was the offensive lineman of the year. Great year for him and Johnny Colbert again all conference. You're right. And Johnny was the offensive lineman of the year the previous year. So those guys are good friends. So they've, they've shared that honor two years now and both guys make all conference and to talk about the players Leon Elmore also on the first team all conference team Antoine Carr first team all conference as well Blake Erickson first team all conference coach and Malcolm Long the second team all conference quarterback right and we had a bunch of guys on defense to make second team uh, all conference too so you know it's a good year for our team as far as uh, as awards is concerned coach as far as the team down the playoffs your thoughts on the playoffs of well what may happen? you know we think we are, we think we are in and uh, you know we are still trying to wait now to see exactly Exactly what our situation is, but you know it'll be announced, announced later today. Well, coach, we appreciate it. Another good season here. One.
thank all of our sponsors, all those Bulldog fans out there who followed us on the Buddy Pugh Show all season long. Keep in tune to your local uh, media outlets as far as news and information as where South Carolina State will play. And of course, this concludes our season here of the Buddy Pugh Show. Congratulations to the Bulldogs. Congratulations to all those Bulldog fans. And we hope to see you next year once again right here on the Buddy Pugh Show. Thank you for watching the Buddy Q Show, featuring highlights of the defending back-to-back -back NEAC champions, SC State University Bulldogs. Our sponsors are State Farm Insurance, Orangeburg County, the South Carolina Education Lottery, the Regional Medical Center, Time Warner Cable, Palmetto Health, Advanced Diagnostic Imaging Center, Fats Cafe, Paragon Builders, Bill Owens Custom Clothing, and Wood Ash Furnishings.